Hey, Faith, you want to start? Sure. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, thank you. All right, I'll get started. My name is Faith Haug. Um, I own Good Judy Garage in Denver. And to date, we have collected $837,000 on GoFundMe for the victims of the Club Q shooting. We are committed to getting 100% of these funds directly to the victims. And to do that, we have invited the National Compassion Fund to join with us to make sure this happens in a transparent, fair, and equitable manner to be led by the local LGBTQ community. And I wanna sincerely thank the victim families and survivors who are here today from prior mass shootings um, for their support. Good morning. My name is Eric Mace. I'm the father of Ryan Mace, who is the youngest of the five students murdered in the Cole Hall shooting on the Northern Illinois University campus, February 14th, 2008. I've been involved with the National Compassion Fund since its inception, and my wife, Mary Kay, and I flew to Orlando to assist in the aftermath of the shooting there in 2016. I also served on the steering committee for the Henry Pratt shooting in Aurora, Illinois in 2019. In this meeting, we have 40 families affected by 15 mass shootings who have rallied together in the last 24 hours to show their support for the Club Q victims. On the line are representatives from Columbine, Aurora, Boulder, Virginia Tech, NIU, Clackamas, Roseburg, Buffalo, Uvalde, Orlando, Tucson, Isla Vista, and Las Vegas. We are all grateful to Faith for making good on her word and we commend her on the research she has conducted as well as the knowledge, ethics and integrity she has put into action on behalf of the victims. We are here today to announce the formation of the Club Q Victims and Survivors Compassion Fund, a centralized victims fund administered by the National Compassion Fund. The NCF is the nation's most qualified administrator of these types of funds with 100% of the collected money distributed to the victims. Donations made to this fund will go directly to victims so that families of the deceased and survivors of the shooting can manage and cope with their trauma in privacy and dignity. Hey everyone, my name is Dee Starr. I am an owner of House of Non-Tradition, which is a gender neutral and all inclusive uh, beauty studio in Colorado. Faith and her partner are both my clients as well. Um, and I've been working with Faith um, since the recent incident happened in Colorado Springs at Club Q. This fund will be led by the LGBTQ plus steering committee including survivors from the Aurora shooting. The National Compassion Fund has administered 23 centralized victims funds for mass casualty crime to date, including for the Orlando nightclub shooting, Atlanta, Buffalo, and Uvalde. The National Compassion Fund is also experienced in addressing the unique dynamics of our LGBTQIA community specifically. Hi, my name is Erica Lafferty, and my mom, Dawn Lafferty Hochsprung, was the principal who was murdered at Sandy Hook School in Newtown, Connecticut in 2012. Mass shootings are a nationwide problem, which is why a national process exists that's ethical, transparent, trusted, and open to every state across the country. Mass shooting victims across America believe that when the public and corporations donate after a mass shooting, the intent is for those donations to go directly to victims and survivors, not to executive salaries and nonprofits of someone else's choosing like we've all experienced. Scott? Sorry. Okay. Hi, we're Kathleen and Scott Larimer. Our son John was killed in the Aurora Theater shooting in July of 2012. Transparency is the hallmark of the National Compassion Fund, and they are structured to report all funds that have been collected and to whom they will be distributed. 
All administrative costs are covered separately and apart from the victim's funds. So 100% of what is collected goes directly to the victims. This is the model we continue to ask for so future families are not re-victimized. Star. Hi, my name is Star and my daughter Lana was murdered on the, the King Superstore and um, Boulder, Colorado, March 22nd, 2021. We're asking anyone who wants to um, make sure that 100% of their donations get directly to the victims and the those injured and in the near vicinity, instead of being given to other nonprofits and programs that the victims will probably may never use and like happened to us in Boulder to now to donate to the National Compassion Fund. Again, 100% will go to the victims and distributed equitably after the fund closes and to protect and a protocol is put in place then victims and survivors applying for the fund will be validated. Donations will go out via Zelly or check so victims can choose their own path forward. Alfred. Hello, I'm Alfred Garza III. I am father of Amy Jo Garza, whom I lost in the Rob Elementary School shooting in Uvalde. The Club Q Victims and Survivor Compassion Fund will stay open as long as appropriate to gather as much as possible for the victims. In Uvalde, because it remained open, the fund was able to collect millions more than it would have had it closed sooner. Mark. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. My name is Mark Talley, Executive Director of Agents for Advocacy, a nonprofit I started after my mother, Geraldine Talley, was killed in an act of dom domestic terrorism here in Buffalo, New York at the Tops location. And just like happened at Uvalde, the same thing happened to us as well. Um, when the National Compassion Fund, for even before the National Compassion Fund came here, there were countless of GoFundMes being started um, by just random people, no idea who they were. Uh, we wasn't able to get in contact with nobody. And at first we were confused, but then the National Compassion Fund came here to Buffalo, New York. Uh, all the families talked to the Compassion Fund. And since that point, it was just, unfortunately, the terminology used is bliss. I mean, they made sure everything ran smoothly. They made sure everything went correctly. And they made sure to give out phone numbers if any of the families here wanted to contact us. And the Compassion Fund here, if the date in which it was scheduled to close, closed, it would have been close to maybe $3 million because the Compassion Fund decided to, you know, lead the, lead the GoFundMe up as long as possible. We ended up collecting millions more and all of these donations came from people across the country. Uh, even on my, my personal website, my business website, somebody, she messaged me saying she donated from London. And, you know, I was just, I was just shocked and at the same time, very happy and relieved that the National Compassion Fund, their reach went worldwide. So all the families that was unfortunately affected by this national tragedy, they were able to get some type of monetary relief for it. So I'm very thankful for everything the National Compassion Fund did for my family, along with the other rest of the families that was impacted by what happened here in Buffalo. Thank you, Mark. Uh, Tom? Yeah, hi, I'm Tom Teves. Um, my son Alex was murdered in the Aurora Theater shooting in 2012. And this model is the model that our mass shooting families from across the country helped develop after being re-victimized in Colorado and elsewhere by nonprofits. After Aurora, families of the deceased from the most publicized mass shootings across the country, Columbine, Virginia Tech, NIU, Aurora, Oak, Oak Creek Seek Temple, and Newtown came together to do something about the re-victimization we all felt at the hands of community nonprofits. We asked the National Center for Victims of Crime to start a different way of charitable giving, one that ensures full transparency and honors donor intent. That call was answered. We are the people that these nonprofits are supposedly raising funds for 
and claim to be helping us. But we're here to tell you this model doesn't work in this situation. The model that needs to work is that the help is 100% of the donations go directly to the victims. We have a voice and we're using it today. What anyone else tells you is irrelevant since they have never lived in our shoes and God willing, they never will have to. Um. <clears throat> Bob, you're on mute. Sorry for that. I'm Bob Weiss. My daughter was killed in the Isla Vista shooting at UC Santa Barbara in 2014. I'm one of the families who flew across the country to make sure that the Orlando families received 100% of the funds that were sent for them. I know three other families on this call who were with me in Orlando. The National Center for Victims of Crime listened to the voices of mass shooting victims like us. And Jeff Dion stood up to lead us. Maybe that was because he understood the trauma himself. He dedicated his entire life to helping victims after his sister was murdered. He's the former head of the Crime Victims Bar Association, and he's part of the LGBTQ plus community. Thanks, Bob. <clears throat> um, Victims First, and in tandem with the National Cash Fund, is also committed to giving 100% directly to victims. And we will be pouring our funds into the Club Q Victims and Survivors um, National uh, Survivor Compassion Fund. We. Um, my family has experienced two mass shootings. Michaela was murdered in Aurora and then Stacy survived the Vegas mass shoot, the Vegas mass shooting. Um, we invite all others who want to see 100% go directly to victims to join us and do, and do the same. Uh, we are so grateful that the National Compassion Fund was invited in and they were willing to help. We're thankful to Good Jody Garage and we're very thankful that Jeff will be here to administer the fund. We, we all trust him implicitly and we have for years. Uh, if there's anyone else from our mass shooting families that wanna make a statement or comment and support, I know Party, you, you had asked to, so just please introduce yourself like we have and um, go ahead, Party. Uh, thank you so much, Anita. Uh, Party Kalika from the uh, father was murdered in, in 2012 uh, at the Oak Creek Temple, uh, Sick Temple of Wisconsin uh, by a white supremacist and we have had the honor of working with the Compassion Fund for the past uh, 10 years, really. Uh, we had another shooting that happened over here at the Miller, um, at the Miller plant. And um, just going through the process, you know, there's a lot of, there's, uh, there's, it's unfortunate that we have a need for this, but at the same time, um, you know, I, I understand also the mental health component of it because for the past 10 years, we've been working with sort of the, the communal trauma that that comes with a lot of what's going to happen with, with your community. And uh, I just want to let you know that the sick community stands in solidarity with, with Colorado Springs and everyone that is on this call. Um, uh, so I think, I think just the Compassion Fund and just your ability to address the communal health of, you know, of, of, um, of the community through this process is another important component of it. Is there anyone else who would like to, to speak? Um, this, this is Lori Haas. Um, my daughter was shot and injured at Virginia Tech in 2007. And sadly, uh, that mass shooting ushered in this era of mass shootings that we see repeat itself over and over and over again. I can share that the public and their intent in giving at, at these times of need in these times of mass tragedy are being misled by nonprofits that stand up and say, give to us, we're gonna give to the victims. And in reality, they don't or can't or won't. So it is with great you know, deal of gratitude that I thank everybody on this call and others who have stepped up and made certain um, and worked with the National Compassion Fund to ensure and 
hold with integrity, you know, and value other people's resources they, they are sending out of the generosity of their heart and that they want to go to the victims. So it, it's, it's imperative that the public understand that funds that are donated in the aftermath of a mass tragedy, mass shooting, that those funds are being carefully administered and 100% going to the victims and survivors of those mass shootings. So thank you very much for the work that everybody on this call is doing. You know, we have a great deal of um, passion and compassion for people, and we want to see those resources donated treated ethically and equitably. Thank you. Anyone else? Hi, Anita, it's Pat. <clears throat> Hi, Pat. I'm a very fortunate, physically uninjured survivor of the Gabby Gifford shooting that's nearly 12 years and away and for some reason i don't know who was responsible but we were very fortunate in a number of things and one was that the community foundation of southern arizona knew that that was going to happen and it didn't happen here because all of the funds were submitted through the community foundation and were distributed equitably to victims only. It did not go to the YWCA memberships or for mats for the for the high school gym. So I am very honored to be here with the rest of you who have suffered in so many different ways than me. And thank you. And I support the community, I mean the uh, compassion fund. Thank you. Thank you, Pat. I would like to add to Pradeep's um, point that there are multi-million dollar grants that come in after a mass shooting for mental health and that goes to um, area local area nonprofits for mental health. Um, so thank you for bringing that up, Pradeep. Is there anyone else who would like to, to speak on this call? I would like to, uh, Anita. Okay. Joe jo Samaha, our daughter was killed at the Virginia Tech shooting in April 2007. So when these mass shootings and uh, tragedies happen, you know, you lose control of your life. And not only do you lose control of the loved one that you had close to you, you lose control of your life. And on top of that, you have uh, funds and institutions that control the dollars that are directed to you and your family members and your loved ones. And you lose control of that as well. And you have to fight and claw your way back in to get those funds that are directed to your tragedy. And it's not an easy road. Um, but 12 years ago, with the inception of the thought of the National Compassion Fund, which developed um, to be fair and equitable in, in controlling those dollars and, and actually distributing those dollars to where they are directed, 100% of those dollars, which is very important. Um, we, are, we are again thankful uh, that the National Compassion Fund was actually created. Um, from the, the effort of everybody on this call and others. So thank you very much um, for this. I know Anita, uh, you, we owe you a lot of thanks for uh, coming up with the idea. And um, we also appreciate Faith for her understanding and uh, trust in the National Compassion Fund to do what is right um, at, for the Club Q families, victims and survivors. Thank you. Uh, anyone else? Okay. <clears throat> um, thank you for everybody for, for coming. Um, we, are, we are not going to answer questions today. We're going to uh, get off of, of the Zoom on the Sunday and uh, spend the rest of the time with our families. Um, we thank everybody for listening to our voices. Uh, we have spoken and um, we just thank you all for, for listening. <clears throat>